I'm guessing if I didn't have my family, um, I'd be dead. I don't know if that's a really bad thing to say or not, but I think I would be. My name is John and I live with a mental illness. This is my experience. I was 21 when I first got diagnosed. There was a lot of points in my life that I wanted to give up. Um, there was a particular moment um, when I was living that things were just too hard and I couldn't get couldn't get going. And um, so I thought you know, the best way would be to, be to end it. Um, and I took a pretty massive overdose and uh, ended up intensive care. And then I had a stint in a psychiatric hospital for about three months. And there, there I was officially diagnosed with schizophrenia. So yeah, I can't really recollect this too clearly, but this is my 40th birthday. I'm yeah, I'm saying by the candles on my cake. Three years ago, I would describe myself as uh, almost resorting back to being a baby. Um, I used to uh, wet myself and dribble and sleep like a cat, you know, 20 hours a day. Um, and then when I was awake, all I did was contend with my OCD and check things. Check if doors were locked, uh, windows were closed. Um, it was fairly chronic. I used to, you know, like, uh, also checked the pockets in my pants to make sure there was no holes in my pockets. So I was constantly pushing my hands in my pockets, you know. Yeah, no, I was just overwhelmed, heaps of stuff. Every time I went to see the doctor, they'd give me more medication. Initially it helped me, but then it started to get out of control. I don't remember this too clearly, but I had a bit of a, uh, a small seizure apparently, and I had uh, fallen over and um, got some stitches in my eye. They thought the, the problem was something else, you know, and they things are a bit unclear back then, but um, yeah, that, I don't think it was helping much at all. But um, since they brought the level of the medication down, things are really improved. So it was just a matter of getting that medication quite, the balance quite right and stuff like that. For me, it was anyway, so yeah, yeah. And I can't believe that it's me, but it is. When I was unwell and the, I was dealing with the medication uh, issues, my family were really concerned that I was actually going to die and I think maybe that was um, one way to try to keep me going. Mum used to try to get me uh, walking. She thought that was a good thing to do. Between the, the hours that I actually slept, because it was a lot of hours, she would uh, drag me down to the beach and uh, get me walking and we'd go for a meal or, you know, um, and uh, it was super. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah, thanks, mate. Three years ago, when I just before I started uh, getting fit, I weighed around between 150 and 160 kilos. We often joke about the fact that I went right around the scales and it couldn't go any further, so <laughs> my weight that is, yeah. And initially, I got off the cigarettes and I bought myself a bike with the money I saved from not smoking. And I started riding my bike and then I decided to ask my brother-in-law who was very fit if he could help me train. And we went for a run the first night and we went for about 400 metres and I nearly died on him. And uh, we often joke about the fact that he was going to have to carry me in and he said to me, there's no way I'm carrying you because he's a little tacker and I'm quite big. So we often reminisce about that. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound too good. We decided to do uh, a half marathon uh, in Melbourne and um, we, did, we did well. We, we did it and we uh, finished, so that was good. It took me two and a half hours. <laughs> it was a long time. Uh, I often tell people I moved a little bit like Cliffy Young, but <laughs> I finished. <laughs> when I was training and the, um, things got tough, I often thought about my mate um, who um, decided to end his own life. And um, I used him as to push me on, inspire me, as well as my brother-in-law, who was I was training with. So yeah, I had some good motivation. He was very proud, you know, everyone was, well, proud of each other, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, family was there, everyone was a little bit emotional and stuff, but, you know, great day. The support group uh, uh, done some wonderful things for me. They're gaining employment for the first time since I was 18, um, and I started there when I was 42. So there's a bit of a, bit of a gap. It's lucky enough to, with the money I earned to save up and buy my first car. Um, so they've done some wonderful things for me, the support group. One time when I first started working at the cafe, my um, sister 
and my mum came along and I caught them standing out the front with their arms around each other crying yeah. and uh, they told me later those cries of happiness they were really happy for me so yeah yeah my support for my family is paramount it's magnificent yeah I've been blessed my mum's unconditional she's caring she's honest she's uh I think she's a pretty wonderful woman I'd call her Wonder Woman <laughs> she's pretty cool I have a really really good relationship with my sisters um, uh, again they're uh, loyal um, they're beautiful girls um, one of them calls me Mr Remarkable uh, which I like <laughs> and uh, no they're both they're both terrific terrific ladies yeah today I'd describe myself as a, a happy-go-lucky character uh, full of life and zest uh, I enjoy every moment of it and um, I couldn't ask for anything more. I want people with mental illness to never give up hope if they're thinking about giving up because things can really, things can work out really well. You know, things can be really good. You can have a really good life. For me, you know, it's, it's yeah, about not giving up, never giving up. Yeah, just hang in there, no matter if it gets too hard, just hang in there. Yeah.